ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local then, local now. Member FDIC. It is Thursday, March 3rd. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. We're going to get your phone calls in this hour. Our phone line is 877-420-TALK. That is 877-420-8255. It is brought to you by White Claw, hard seltzer. You know what it is made pure. We've also got our text line open this hour. We're going to do that as well. We got some good text last night. I hope we can continue that with you. Get your phones ready. I'm going to give you the number and then program it in. Just program it in so you have it. It's 304-523-2275. That's 304-523-2275. So that's the text line to be a part of today's program. We got a mixed bag here. We got some good news and we got some bad news. Uh, The bad news is the men lost last night to Western Kentucky 86-72. The good news is that the Marshall women won 80-62 80-62 to 62 on the road against the Hilltoppers. So the Herd will close out the regular season on Saturday at the Cam Henderson Center with the women, and the men will be on the road Saturday as well. Now we'll have that men's broadcast for you right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. You can also catch that on our sister station, 93.7 The Dog. So we're going to talk about these matchups this hour. We're going to hear from Dan D'Antoni a little bit later on. Uh, we're going to hear from Tony Kemper in a few minutes as uh, really, that was a great win. Ryan Sirk, our studio producer, is with us this afternoon. He's got the sound bites for uh, Coach Kemper, and Coach gave his post game last night. Got to be feeling good. You beat Western Kentucky on the road. So, Ryan, first up, what do we got from Coach Kemper as far as um, his post game comments? Yeah, so Tony Kemper, to start off the press conference, he talked about how it finally felt good to win at WKU. I I don't think he's ever won there. He talked a little bit about that. So he was just really happy to finally win one. Okay, let's hear that. There's a lot of people in there that have experienced just – it has not gone well over here. You know, I've been on the other end of a lot of games where it's just like, when when do we get to get out of here, you know? And so we really talked about trying to go zero zero and start this game new. We had an eight point lead, which um, I'm not sure I've ever had an eight point lead over here, but boy, we had one at halftime. And so we got to go zero zero and go back to work. And I thought, um, you know, her stat line is not great. Actually, she had 10 rebounds. I thought Lorelai Roper was great on the defensive end in the third quarter, Um, more active. She got a bunch of those rebounds in the third quarter and, uh, you know, I, I, we did a good job on Miral Abdel Gawad. Um, I'm probably messing her name up. Um, she had seven. I mean, that's how good she is. She had 17, and I thought that all the people that were running at her did a pretty nice job on her. She's just really, really good. And uh, so I thought we kind of kept her off balance. And, uh, you know, we got out to shooters better after the first quarter. And, uh, you know, that's stuff we got to repeat. Some of the things uh, stood out to me. Marshall had 42 points in the paint against the Hilltoppers. They had 22 points off turnovers, 20-11 in favor of the Herd in this one. That stood out to me. And, yeah, Lorelai Roper stood out to me as well. Sure, you look at her numbers and go, okay, four points, two of five there. But she had 10 rebounds, as Coach mentioned. She also had a block. She had a steal. And if you look at her plus minus, when she was out there, her plus minus was plus 25. That is getting it done. I mean, you look at some of the players out there and you see, you know, Kia Sivils with minus two. You know, you see CC Mays minus one. But then you see your your heavyweights here in, in this game, at least. Yeah, you know, Brianna Furby was plus 29. Aaliyah Dunham was plus 20. Savannah Wheeler was plus 18. So that's good. Wheeler had 27 points, uh, Dunham had 14, uh, Brianna Furby had 18, and Roper, again, four points, but 10 rebounds, had a steal, had a block, and she was positive. She was in the positive point side of this game. And that's why I kind of like the plus-minus. I know it's a hockey thing a little bit more, but I really do like the plus-minus because it kind of have an indicator 
of what was happening when you were out there on the floor? You know, were you more positive number or were you more of a negative number? Maybe it's not a fair statistic because I mean, you look at what Western Kentucky did and they had a player that had seven points and she was plus three. I mean, was she really a factor? Yeah, I, I don't know. She had five assists. So you look at that and that was a uh, Festino. But I like that number and you look at those numbers and you have four players in double digit plus column and that's pretty good for uh going out there and playing against western kentucky now ryan what else we got from coaches uh post game last night so kemper discussed a little bit about how the team feels right now going into the last game of the season and we're at the stage of the season where anything could happen so he discussed a little bit about that okay you know and it's the time of year where you know it's just it can happen for anybody so why not us so Get your heads right. Get to thinking about the right stuff. Um, lock in. Um, you know, we, we so I, I guarantee you, body wise, they're tired. We've been doing this for a long time. You know, they don't want to watch me. We we started practice great two days ago. Great two days ago. And I said, I, I blew my whistle. I was like, free throw transition, which that's a tough drill, right? And you just heard audible groans. You know, they were so, so happy. And then Kia Civils, who has never practiced bad in her life. She's never not... I just look at her, she's going, oh, and then she just laughed. You know, it's just that time of year where you got to battle through that stuff. You've done that drill a hundred times, and it's got to be good because against Western Kentucky, it matters. Always matters against Western Kentucky. And I just want to ask a simple question here. Why not us? Who said it better, Joe Burrow or Tony Kemper? Who said it better? I'm not throwing – no, Cirque, I'm not throwing Grassy in here. Why are you putting him in this? I mean – he said it too, you, but not to not for the world to hear. But he said that to us. Why not us? Just just saying. It's always soccer with you. It's always about soccer with you because no one else gives it the love it deserves. Always Especially about not soccer. You. Always about oh, that's unfair and <laughs> untrue. That is untrue. I don't want to hear that. Still, always about soccer with you. All right, um, that was Tony Kemper. Uh, anything? Did we get? Did we get everything? Anything else from Tony on that one? No, a lot of the. It was a Zoom press conference, so a lot of it as, was distorted. As they all are. Yeah. I like I like the Zooms. I like the Zooms. You know, you can sit back and do f- multiple press conferences at the same time. And, I mean, you don't have to travel all the, all the way to Bowling Green, Kentucky. Yeah, exactly. See? Y- y- exactly. All right. That's Tony Kemper. We're going to get into this men's game. we got to go back and, and look at this. we got Dan Dan, Tony. Uh, we got Tavion from last night as well. Okay, we'll um, we'll try to get that. Here's the thing with Tavion. You know, he was talking about lazy passes last night and things like that, and I just asked him because I know he'd a straight up answer it. I'm like, why is that? Why does it happen? Why does this team revert? And he said it was mental. A lot of it's mental, mental issues. So, you know, we'll figure out what's happening with the Thundering Herd. We'll hear from Dan D'Antoni, get some of his thoughts. Uh, we're gonna get your phone calls and texts in. I promise. The text line is 304-523-2275-304-523. 2275 phone line brought to you by White Claw 877 420 Talk. More coming up. This is the Thursday edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank, the local bank that's here for every step of your life's journey. Member FDIC. Our text line is open 304-523-2275. I sent Coach Kemper a text. I asked him who said it better, him or Joe Burrow. Why not us? We'll get his response, I'm sure, before the end of the show if uh, he's available. Uh we're at that point now. I get, we got to talk about it. Talked about it last night. Marshall lost. Lost to Western Kentucky. 86-72 Western Kentucky. Let's, let's go over it. I've had a I've had a few hours to, to kind of get ready to do this. We did our post game last night, and you know, I was having a terrible day yesterday anyway, and then, then that happened. And so that just cascaded into to more failure. It was like, all right, let's just let's deal with it here. One thing that's positive, Tavion was he was ten of nineteen, twenty four points, four six from the free throw line. He had six boards. That was positive. Five assists. Had a turnover though. Had a block. 
I mean, it's one thing. You look at some of the uh, the numbers here, and the herd started to play right there with Western Kentucky when this game started. Like, okay, this is this is going to be good. You're going to beat Western Kentucky. You're going to feel good. And, then, you know, it's, it's probably a toss-up if you go down to Bowling Green on Saturday. But if you can get the split at least, you are got to be feeling good. And then Dan talked about substitutions and wasn't very good. And the herd started to fall apart. Marshall in that first half shot 12 of 33 for 36 percent. And I know I like going over the stats, and that's not ultimately the true indicator at times. But 12 of 33, 36 percent from the three-point line, 415 for 27 percent. Free throws, not many opportunities. Didn't take advantage of any of them. Oh, four there. And the second half, the herd shot better, 17 of 32. It's a tale of two halves here. I mean, 53%, much better. 5 of 10 from the three-point line. So you took less and you made one more. So more efficient. 50% there. Free throw line, a lot better. 5 of 6. And you actually outscored Western Kentucky in that second half, 44-43. The problem was you got off to a good start and you started to fall apart. 43-28 is what the score was going into halftime. So Marshall was able to keep with Western Kentucky in that second half, outscored them by one. And you look at some of the other numbers. Western Kentucky killed them in the paint, 42-30. Points off turnovers. Actually, Marshall won that one, 19-15. Second chance points, 13-11 in favor of the herd here. I mean, bench wasn't really an issue. I mean, nine bench points for Marshall. It's better than Western Kentucky's two, but there were guys who were having great nights. Josh Anderson had 16 for Western Kentucky. Davion McKnight had 23. Cameron Justice, career high, by the way, 27 against the herd. Don't you get sick and tired of... Guys on the other team getting career highs. Players are going to get theirs. But aren't you tired of players getting career highs against you? Not only are they having a good game, they're having a great game. Cameron Justice, is he going to have another 27-point game? Someone else might have a career high against the Herd on Saturday. That would make me, if I was on the team, I, if I'm Tavion, I'm like, look, we can't do this anymore. We can't, can't be giving up a lot of points to guys having career days, not just having good days, career days. So uh, Dan D'Antoni, last night we heard his, uh, I mean, we heard his post-game comments. Uh, We're not going to play every single moment of it. We did break down some uh, some key moments from his post-game last night, and uh, I got Ryan Sirk with me. He's producing the show this afternoon. So where do we start with uh, what you got for us from uh, Dan's post-game last night? just kind of feeding off what you were saying is that Dan believed the team played well to start off the game, and this is what he had to say about that. Like I said, we came out and played really good basketball for about six minutes. Uh, could be the substitution because right when we substituted, they took off. You know, uh, Gorn uh, played eight minutes. He's minus 14. That was, that's the difference in the game right there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get a handle on it, fellas. I, I, sometimes I get – a little lost because we do things that uh, I don't know where they come from. You know, we don't – we seem not be able to make the big plays when we have to. And teams get away from us a little bit. There's a six-point game. and Plus minus. Big number. Like we're playing fantasy sports right now. You look at Marshall's roster, you lose that day because you're going to get some negative points. You know, fantasy points, yeah, they take points away from you. You get negatives. Like in hockey, you get scored on. Fantasy sports, you got a negative number there. They take points away from you. They don't do that in basketball, thankfully. But at the same time, I mean, what if um, – I know scoring is a little different here, but I think that's a good indicator of what's happening, what you're doing, what you're contributing. Are you on – the court for more positive plays or more negative plays. That's a good indicator. Not necessarily what you're doing, but if you're scoring a lot and you're still on the negative side, well, you're not. You're giving up a lot too. You're scoring a lot, but you're giving up a lot. It's not cumulative. If you're out on the court and you're negative, that means you've scored, but you've given up more than you've scored, or the team has given up more while you're on the court. I mean, you could score four or five points and be in a plus 20 because you were on the court for more positive plays. So that's a uh, that's a good indicator there. What's up for De- What's next for Dan? What do we got? Well, I think plus or minus, it just shows people believe that, that players do things that don't show up on the stat sheet, but plus or minus, it does show up on the stat sheet, right? You look at guys like Draymond Green, he doesn't do everything. He doesn't score a lot of points, but his plus minus is always really high. I'll take it. So um, what else we got from Dan as far as uh, from last night? What you, would you, would you pull out for me? Uh, Dan talked a little bit about how the team was only really functioning with Tavion Kinsey out on the floor. If he wasn't out there, he, nothing was happening. 
But I thought just with Tavion in there in the second half even, I think Tavion had, what, 14 or how many do you have second half, 16 or 14 or something like that. And uh, as long as he was in there, we were fine. And we got it second half after a halftime, get in there and you talk to him for a while, we got it. But, uh, you know, I didn't think, you know, Gorn's got to give us more guarding the pick and roll. He's got to be better at uh, defending the ball a little bit. Uh, Tucson did a pretty good job when he got in there defending the ball. He's just he's just a freshman. He got in there, turned the ball over a couple times, and just being too quick with everything. and. You got a seven-five guy in there. It's he hadn't faced that before, so uh. got to face the big guy eventually, and you'll see that again. You'll see a big guy again. So the herd falls yesterday. One more to go. One more regular season game to go on the road. If Marshall comes out, plays like a house of fire, just hitting everything, beats Western Kentucky on its own court. Do you feel a little bit better? Like okay, they put it together. They rebound nicely, or. Get too little too late as you're getting ready for the Conference USA tournament. Now, again, doesn't matter what happens in the sense that this game coming up on Saturday is not going to kill you. It's the next one because the next one could be the last one. You play on Tuesday, you lose that, you're done. There's no there's no, no NIT, there's no CBI, there's no CIT or any other different secondary, ancillary, tertiary tournament. There's none of that. It's it's over. The season's done. There's no post anything. You got to win your conference tournament. And if you make a run, you make it to the championship game. You're not getting into the NIT if you lose that. So basically, you got to win your tournament to get into the NCAA tournament. And that's going to be a tough run for the Thundering Herd. All right, I want to get your feedback on this. 304-523-2275. That's our text line, 304-523-2275. I got some of your texts lined up. We're going to start doing that. So, again, you can be a part of that. Uh, We've got a couple score updates. We're going to get to softball and baseball in action. And so far, it's looking pretty good for the Thundering Herd. So we have got all of that and your phone calls at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Before we hit the break, uh, we got one more Dan D'Antoni cut, right? Uh, What did you pull from – what's the last cut you pulled? It's just a little small thing that Dan mentioned, how the team's feeling going into the end of the season and what he expects from the team. Okay. We're going to play hard. Let's put it this way. We're going to play hard. We've got one more game down there. We have played better. We can, we can, it's still within our grasp, and then we go down to the tournament and see what's happening. And then at the end, we'll, we'll try to assess where we are and what we got to do. Okay, that's Dan D'Antoni from last night's post game, Thundering Herd losing. And we'll talk more about it, 86 72. I want to get your feedback in. We'll do that when we continue. This is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Our text line is open this hour. That means you get a chance to uh, maybe direct some of the show. You get to kind of tell us where we go on the show. Our producer this afternoon is Ryan Sirk. I love what you, you were trying to drop a fun fact on me earlier. And I, I knew the fun fact, but you still you were proud of the fun fact. So go ahead. I, I want I want you to give me the fun fact because Cameron Justice twenty seven points career numbers for Cameron Justice, and you have a fun fact that I knew, but we haven't shared on this show. So go ahead, hit me with your fun fact. So Cameron Justice has been playing college basketball for seven years. He's old. He's very old. But I'm sorry that I'll have to find another fun fact for you that you do not know. Okay, that's fair. You. That's fair. So why why is um, – what's the other fun fact? Because, again, you were, like, proud of the fact. Like, you were telling me in the break, oh, he hates Marshall. He hates Marshall. You were, like – you were so certain of that. You were solid on that. I mean, if you get your career high against Marshall, Marshall knocks you out of the CIT, and then Marshall tries to recruit you to transfer to Marshall, and you decline and go to WKU instead – there's got to be some bad blood between him and Marshall, right? All right. Text line 304-523-2275. I, I need to get to your fun fact. All right. Um, here we go. The um, text line, we'll start We'll start at the top. Texter writes, forget about happy appy. I want the Chanticleers, the team that plays dirty on baby blue turf. A proud and fierce rooster shall be stomped on the green turf of Marshall Thundering Herd 
Herd fans, best food, best beaches, not at Myrtle. It's Charleston, Carolina, where the Civil War started. Let's get it on. I want them blue turf cocky roosters. Text line never disappoints me. Never. Texter writes, hey, Paul, let's take a look again at the box score from last night's game versus Western Kentucky. Of our five starters, four finished with one foul, one finish with one foul okay our big men had three fouls between them paul that tells me we are not playing hard no fouls going for a rebound no fouls going for a loose ball no fouls going for a steal no fouls playing aggressive in your face defense this tells me the herd just isn't playing hard especially on the defensive side of the ball thanks and enjoy the show go herd and also um i gotta edit all right because yeah i was trying to read this on the fly Edit. One finish with two fouls. Sorry. Eh, no no apologies there. No apologies there. Needed. I got the gist of it. Want more hustle. More going after it. More aggression. Texter writes, guess I'm forgetting Marshall's basketball season. Phone lines 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Paul Swan, your host for this edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Our producer this afternoon, Ryan Sirk. Thundering Herd doing well in other sports, though. We'll talk a little bit more about it when we continue. Softball with the 11-0 shutout victory over Purdue-Fort Wayne. So, good job there. And then baseball with the 2-1 win over Oakland. So, getting it done on the diamond, the women and the men. So, good job there from the Thundering Herd. Uh, We'll keep update on everything else that's happening, plus your phone calls and texts when we continue with this edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Welcome back to The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Paul Swan, your host. Our phone lines this hour brought to you by White Claw at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Text line is open as well. Always a good opportunity to to shoot me a note if you can. And we do that every single day at 304-523-2275. That's 304-523-2275. Ryan Sirk, our producer this afternoon, fielding your phone calls. I've got your text. All right. Um, Texture writes, this is a throwdown on the Sunbelt Conference. I think this is a continuation of going after uh, Coastal Carolina, the Chanticleers, going after Coastal. Got to be careful. That entire lineup is going to be tough. I'm excited for already. Because, one, you're going to be the new kid on the block. You're not coming in as a as an established team. You have no other than your reputation coming in, whatever that might mean, your reputation coming in. They might be looking at you, these, these other players, other teams, they might be looking at you like, okay, yeah, th- this isn't a marshal of old. Yeah, it's Marshall, but this is the Sun Belt. You're coming in here. You're coming into the Sun Belt. What do you think you're doing? You're not running anything here. So you got to be careful. Go in. Go into the league. How you doing? We're Marshall. Glad to be here. And then drop. Then drop 20 or 30 on Troy. Beat them by 20 or 30. Just make a statement. Come out. First conference game. On the road. You beat Troy by 20 or 30. Introduce your, introduce yourself to the Sun Belt that way. Just, just come out and... And every day, now, we've kind of fallen a little behind on it. We, every day, I ask the the staff, the interns, I want to know, and I might have to start relying on you guys. I might have to make this a listener thing more than an intern thing because, well, I, I didn't get a list today of things. And I know some things have happened. Every day, I ask the interns, I want to know if Coach Huff is closing the gap. How is Coach Huff closing the gap? And are we still trusting the process? Those are standing orders every day. Let me know. If Coach Huff is trusting the process and closing the gap, mostly I want to know if the gap is being closed here. So we're trying to every day figure that out. I'm going to put that on you now, the listeners. That's going to be your job. Let me know every day if a coach is closing the gap. We're trusting the process here, 304-523-2275. That's 304-523-2275. Ryan, you're trying to message me. You're trying to message me. Just say it. Can you say it? You're trying to message me, you know, in our complicated producer host communication system off air. What what are you trying to message me? Can you say it? That the intro to your show was cut short because the monitor wasn't working properly. Okay, so the monitor's not working? It, it, it is now. I okay, fixed okay. It, so that, that's why so we, we could have saved there. that. Yeah, we didn't need. Okay, so that's why I, I was trying to. Okay, so we didn't need that. 
We didn't need that part. You missed this, haven't you? You know, that's just us going back and forth, having fun. You missed this. Yeah, I love this. Okay. I always love talking to you. We'll do more of it. We'll do more of it. Uh, you had fun yesterday calling the game? You did it for WMUL. You had fun? Yeah, I, I, was, I, was, I was there. I was there. It was unfortunate ending of the game. But to, to go on your point, Coach Huff on Twitter said that he hashtag closed the gap and hashtag is trusting the process. Okay. So. that's not, I need to know that every day. I need yeah. to know if Coach is actually trusting the process and closing the gap. And Marshall Football tweeted, closing the gap isn't easy, but it's what we have to do. So they're closing it. Okay. Heard wins in baseball earlier, extending the winning streak to six over Oakland. That's good. You know somebody we need to get on the program next week since, uh, well, tomorrow I'm going to be busy at, at Sea Palms is Coach Grobe. We need to get him on. Team is uh, teeing off 8.15 in the morning at Sea Palms. So we need to get Coach on to talk about that. You know, softball, if we can we can make some time and get the Coach Lyon in here as well, we need to get her on. Softball is looking pretty good right now. That's one thing I always thought. Softball was one of those signature sports at Marshall that any second it could just break. It could just break and, and just snap off some some serious runs here, win some conference championships. It, it's got that potential. It, just, it could just break. And I like where they're going so far. I'm hoping we can get baseball to that point where it just it can break. Get get them a new stadium. It can break. Just go. And golf, golf is just one of those crazy, it's a team sport, but it's individual. It's crazy. It's serious. It's like tennis. Tennis is a team sport, but it's also kind of individual. Yeah. Hey, we're all friends until uh, one of you all lose, and, I, you know, I'm winning my match. And you, I don't know how, I don't know what that competition level looks like. It's, uh, it's their team wins and their individual wins and losses. I hate to be if it's a, if there's a, if the match is everything's tied and there's like one match left and that's the tiebreaker and you lose it. Forget about those other losses. It's you. No, you you lost. All right, uh, Texas writing uh, his throwdown is on Happy Appy and the Dirty Rooster players. Okay, the Dirty Rooster players. Does that mean? Does that mean on game day when it's a, a Roosters day? You know, because yeah, you know, we've done the show at the past. The Roosters have been a sponsor of ours. Are we going to have to call Roosters something else on on game day when it's uh, Coastal Carolina? Or are they going to serve up Coastal Carolina Roosters on the menu? That would be acceptable. That would be acceptable. I'll have to pass that along. On herd game days against Coastal Carolina on the menu, Roosters. The Chanticleers, the Roosters. I like Chanticleers better as a name. And I have to I have to admit, prior to Marshall being in a conference with Coastal Carolina, I just dug the name. Coastal Carolina, the Chanticleers. I like the color scheme. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. I like them. Keep an eye on them. I think of a chandelier when I hear Chanticleer. I don't know why. A chandelier. It's close enough. It's close enough. Completely different objects. But wording and sounding, it's close enough. Yeah, that was my thing, though. I had someone ask me at a Marshall game one time, like, did you go to Coastal Carolina? No, I just like the name, Coastal Carolina. Because you know, the program was coming up, and, you know, you were seeing more of Coastal Carolina. It was playing football. It was it was getting up there. I was like, you know, just I, I liked it. I was like, and now I can't, and, and I will no longer. They're, they're on the list now. I'm like Ari Agnes. I'm like Ari Agnes. I don't love anybody that's not Marshall. Got to get that on a shirt. People wouldn't like you if you support Coastal Carolina now. Oh, never, never again. Yeah. It's over. No support. None, none of that. It's not happening. And that's respectable n- now. Yeah, we'll have to. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna as soon as Ari gets me the shirt, because again, that's her saying. Uh, we're gonna get that interview posted. However, that's gonna come up uh, here real soon. So check our website there. So uh, I'm gonna be like Ari Agnes when it comes to these teams. The whole, I don't love anybody but the herd. I mean, she flat out said that because. Appy's going to be her travel partner, it looks like, for volleyball. So that's going to be great. And so that's going to really be you know, getting that heated up a little bit between those two. And you know, I'm here for it. And she was like, look, I, I doesn't need to be this travel partner. I am not here for any of this. I, If it's not the herd, I don't love it. That is one of the best hires that uh, you know has ever been made at Marshall University. Uh, just instantly – instantly into uh, everything that's going on with the herd and just bring so much. There have been some really good hires as of late. There's some really good hires. I'll, I'll give credit to everyone who's involved, some good hires here. And uh, I've had people come to me and tell me over the last couple of days that they really think the hire of Christian Spears is going to be good, that it's going to be a – I don't want to use transformative. That's not my word, but the university is going to move forward. And I hope that they're right because he sounds like he's – got a plan he's got a vision 
and I'm excited to see and hear what that vision is. And remember, when he was with us, he said that we're going to see some we're going to see some singles, some doubles, and some triples here real soon. You know, try to get some things on base here, get some wins. Well, you got to get on base, so you got to hit maybe a single. That that'll be good. Get get a couple of doubles out there, maybe get a triple. So there are some things coming up from him that March 14th. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. Uh, one thing is certain, though, and I'll just answer this right now because I've had this asked to me, you know, not during the show, not during showtime, but uh, what do you think he's going to do with Dan Tantoni? He's not going to do anything. Day one, he's not going to come in and say, all right, you're fired. I mean, let the man let the man take a, an opportunity to sit down with his coaches and outline what he expects and how he moves forward. I mean, you just don't come in. You just don't come in day one and start firing people. That sends the wrong message. And you might disagree with me, and I'm fine with that. You might disagree with me. I know it's been a bad season for basketball. Yeah, you know, we're on the verge of 20 losses here. I get it. I totally get it. But I don't think this is how you roll here. I mean, you sit down with your coaches and you say, "All right, what do you need to be successful? What can we do? What is not working? What needs to improve to work?" And here's what I expect. Here's where I want to see this program. This is what I'm looking for. I mean, it's going to happen with everybody. And you're going to get an outline pretty much. I don't know if it's going to be day one, but I'm sure there's a notebook somewhere like, okay, basketball, need this, this, this. Volleyball, we need to do this, this, this. What do you need? This is what I, I need. This is what I want to see. What do you want to see? What do you need? And it will go down the list. Soccer, what do you need? Grass field. Okay, it's on the list. Can't get that to you right away, but we're going to work on that. Volleyball, what do you need? Air conditioning. Okay, I can work on that. That's a basketball thing also. So air conditioning for the Henderson Center. We can work on that. That was an Ori Agnes ask. Seriously. Uh, She she said it yesterday. I'm going to get that interview posted because it was really good. She said it. That you, you want to have nice, if all things being equal, you want to have nice, shiny things. And so you need nice, shiny things. And, of course, air conditioning matters at the Henderson Center. So creature comfort. That was huge. Promise. that, in, that I'll get that posted. We'll do that. You can find it on our website when I get it posted at wrvc.com. Our text line is still open for you at 304-523-2275. 304-523-2275 to be a part of today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Baseball's looking pretty good so far. Softball's looking pretty good as well. So pretty good day. Good day despite yesterday, despite what happened with the Thundering Herd. Depending on what happens on Saturday, are you are you out Think about that. Are you out? Are you in, all in for the tournament? You're just going to put it all in? Just put what's left on the board for you. Whatever chips you got left. Are you putting them all in? Not not on Saturday. Tournament. Are you putting it all in? Or are you are you holding back a little bit? Like, okay, let me see what Saturday looks like before I, I go all in. I put it all in. No, put it all in, right? You're putting everything in. Like, okay, Dan's going to get it figured out. Make a run. Make a run. I mean, what happens? If Marshall gets into the NCAA tournament, makes that run, obviously going to be a very low seed, but in the tournament nonetheless, don't know if Marshall has realistic expectations of going far if you're a low seed, but you're in. You're in. What if that happens, though? And here's something else to keep in mind. Is this team out? I know that's kind of a tough question to ask. Is this team in or out? We'll see a little bit of that on Saturday, if this team is in or out. And then that tournament game, we're going to know right there if this team is in and out. I don't care about the win or loss. If it's a if it's a close game and it's a loss, but this team was all in, all right, they're, we knew. They showed up. If it's a terrible loss and they just didn't want to be there, we know they're out. That's a Just think on that for a little bit. We'll tackle that again tomorrow. Are they at the point now where, okay, reset time. Forget about what happened against Western. Go down, beat Western on Saturday reset time here it is moment of truth time we're not going to give any more career highs against us from players not going to do that going to play smart top to bottom going to play smart going to be aggressive we got nothing to lose nothing to lose here we're all in or are we going to see this team lose badly both on saturday and the conference tournament and then is that going to be an indicator that they're out there's we're done get us out of here we're done with this thing over how many players are going to uh, hit that transfer portal? How many are going to stay? How many are going to come in from the transfer portal? That's another question. So keep that in mind. 
in or out, what will Saturday show us? Is This team is in or out. In or out. All right. Back tomorrow. Uh, let's see. Um, Texer writes, I don't know if I understand where you're going with this. WU fans, Marshall fans, done talk about the future. Not been good for basketball for WVU or Marshall. Hasn't been a good season. So, if you're a basketball fan in the state of West Virginia, it's not good right now either way. Here's the thing, though. I've seen a lot on social. Do you run Bob Huggins out of town? I get it. You're having a bad year, but do you run Bob Huggins out of town? One of the all-time winningest coaches in basketball history. Do you run him out of town? Because where are you going to get a better coach at this point? What is out there that will take WVU to a higher level right now? What is out there? That's going to do it for this edition. Back tomorrow. We'll do it all over again. Thanks for tuning in. I want to thank our producer, Ryan Sirk, for pinching in today and helping out. Back tomorrow here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. WRBC Huntington, W231BS Huntington, broadcasting from the Oscars Breakfast Burgers and Brew Studios. This is ESPN 94.1 at AM 930.